In this presentation, we're going to focus on how we're going to look at horses for confirmation. Much of what we're going to do is really going to be based on halter horses and also how we're going to use um, the things that we're going to look at and can divide, put, go ahead and put them into a set of oral reasons. So the basic categories we're going to evaluate a horse at halter on balance, muscle, their structure, their quality and refinement, the breed and sex characteristics, and the travel and way of going. When you devise a set of oral reasons, these are really the basic categories that you're going to um, describe or talk about with probably the most time spent on balance, muscle, and structure. So to go through some of these different areas, we will start with balance because basically balance is looking to see if the horse is proportioned together and it really is where you should pretty much start to look at any group of horses and determine which one is the most balanced. So where we're going to look at is we want to see um, how proportionate that horse is and so we're going to look to see if the length of his shoulder is relatively equal to the length of his back and if this is also relatively equal to the length of, the, of his hip which is going to go from the point of the hip to his point of the buttocks. The back is going to go from the point of his withers up here to the end of his loin. So that's one area that we're going to look and evaluate on balance. The next one is his neck. We want the neck to be equal to or longer than the lengths of the shoulder, back, and hip. Also, ideally, we would prefer the top line of the neck to be twice as long as that of the underline. So we want a relatively long neck on, on our horses. The next area that we're going to look at when we move into balance is also the length of the horse's head. As you can see by the blue line here, we prefer the head to be shorter, um, that equal to or shorter than the length of the neck and also the length of the shoulder, the back, and the hip. The next area, as we're still evalu evaluating a horse's balance, is, the, is their back in relation to the underline. We want the horse's length of the back from, the, from where his withers end to uh, his hip here to be shorter than from behind their shoulder and, and um, through the base of their underline here. So we want this line to be shorter than um, the horse's underline here. Our other assessment of overall balance is to see the depth of heart. So if we go from the point of the withers to the bottom of the barrel, that line should be equal to the, from the point of the barrel down to the ground. So here's a pair of horses that we can look at and evaluate some basic balance on them. If you look at the bay mare over here and we look at the shoulder, the back, and the hip, we can see these lines are relatively close or fairly, fairly equal. I'll grant you that the back is maybe a little bit longer um, and so she's not perfectly balanced. However, if you come over to the sorrel mare over here, it's easy to see that this mare is lacking some of the balance. She's not too bad in her shoulder and hip, but her back is quite a bit longer than either of these two other lines. Also, as we go and look our next area of balance of the length of the neck, remember we want the neck to be equal to or longer than those other areas, and we prefer the top line to be twice as long as that of the underline. This mare is very long in her neck. Um, she could be a little bit longer, but she does have a good two to one ratio from top to bottom, and also the length of her head is shorter than these other areas. This mare does happen to have a fairly long neck. However, the ratio of top to bottom is nearly more equal, and so not quite as desirable a uh, shape to her neck as what we have on the bay mare here. The other assessment of balance is the depth of heart, excuse me, will go to the shortness of back, so the relation of the back to the underline, and it's easy to see that this mare is quite a bit longer in her back than she is in her underline. This mare, although slightly longer, although slightly longer, is uh, relatively, is closer to being more equal from her, her back uh, to her underline. Then also if we look from the depth of the heart from here to here and here to the ground, we can see really that this mirror is really not too bad. She's kind of almost equal and this mirror is about the same too. Here's a pair of horses to look at and think about a little bit. Um, just take a second and look and think to yourself which one is probably more desirably balanced or more proportioned to herself. So if we ba look at the basic areas of the back, the shoulders, and the hip, I think it's kind of easy to see that the braided mare main horse over here uh, is going to be a little bit longer in her back, leaving her to be not quite as nicely balanced as the horse is on this side. We can see quite a bit of a length of a back here that doesn't really match her shoulder and her hip, 
Uh, the length of the neck isn't too bad, but this area here is what's really going to throw off her balance, particularly in relation to the bright sorrel horse on this side. So our next category we're going to go into evaluate um, is muscle. And with muscling, we can evaluate it from the side, and it's also better to evaluate it from front and rear. When we're looking at the side, we really can just look at down here through their shoulder and forearm. We'll also down, look down here through their hip and their stifle. However, it's easier to see if we move in front of them and behind them and look to see we want them to be what we say um, muscled up and, and well up here through their pectoral region and also where they have somewhat of an inverted V. In front, we're going to look to see how much muscle comes down in her forearms and ties in down through her shoulders. We'll look at how much expression she has. Another phrase people will use is um, the, delinea um, the delineation of her muscle pattern. Also, when we look at from behind, and I'll show you another image of this, we'd like them to be wider from the base of their stifle here than they are at the point of the hip. Remember, the push and the power and the drive comes from behind, and so we'd like this to be wider through this area than it is at the point of the hip, and we also look at the muscling in their gaskin, and this should be as much outer muscling as we have on the inside. Here's another illustration um, of a horse that we can look at her from behind. And again, we want it to be relatively wider through the stifle region here than up at the point of the hip, and quite a bit of muscling around here through the through the um, through the Gaskin region. We're looking for the ripple, okay, and and uh, the expression of the muscle. We also want to see that it is a good quality muscle that ties in down deep and low into the joints. This is an illustration that's been used for years by Oren Mixer as the ideal quarter horse. And you can see even from the side the kind of um, expression of muscling and stuff that this horse has in her through his shoulder and forearm, down here through his hip and into his gaskin. We can look on the sorrel horse over here and see she's adequate in her muscling but not going to be very um, expressionally and heavy muscled through her shoulder, her forearm region, and, and those areas that we can see from the side. Here's a horse that we do see have some angles from both front and behind, and we can see that she's got just what I would consider moderately muscled through her shoulder and forearm, down here through her stifle and her gaskin region. We can see this mare in front, and again, she's got some muscling up here through her pectoral region. She does V up fairly well and has some muscling down here through the outside of her forearm. She is a little tough to see, but she is a bit wider through her stifle and has kind of just a long muscle pattern, kind of a moderate amount of muscling as you move down through her lower leg. This is a horse that I consider to be very light muscle. All right, when you look in her through his shoulder and his forearm from the side, that doesn't look like there's very much there. Also, when you look at him both in front and behind, there's not much that V's up in here. He's kind of devoid in his muscling, pretty skimpy and, and slight in his muscling down here through his forearm. Kind of the same type of thing with, that you see here back here in his hind end. So I would consider this to be a relatively light muscled horse. Now if we're moving into the basic, um, another category that we're going to look at is the horse's basic overall structure. And this is really pretty much how he's put together. And we really can take the picture of the horse from head to toe. You could talk different categories, but if we just want to go head to toe, sometimes that's the simplest. And we'll just start off here with the head of the horse, realizing that uh, we want a relatively large eye that's set wide off to the side and a relatively large muzzle. In addition, we want to make sure that he has a relatively clean in his throat latch, which all allows for a more functional athletic type of horse because it's going to allow more flexion and give there through his pole um, and be able to, to move his head around quite a bit better. We talked about the 2 to 1 ratio of his neck. We also want this neck to tie in high between his chest floor and tie in long and deep into his shoulder and his withers, as you can see what this horse does a very nice job of doing. A little bit more about the horse's head. Here's another horse's head that has a fairly big eye, uh, some good nostrils in that, and a relatively attractive type of head. This is a head on a horse that I'm kind of privy to because she tends to be a small-eyed, a pig-eyed type of horse is what we would say. These type of eyes um, tend to be on a horse that's going to be a little bit nervous, a little bit more fractious. They might shy just a little bit, so it's something else to think about and look at when you're looking at the overall head and neck of some horses. Looking again some more at the throat latch, um, neck and shoulder orientation of about three different horses that we have here. This is a horse you can see she's pretty thick up here in her throat latch. She does not have the two to one ratio of her neck and her neck is relatively um, short. 
we haven't yet talked about, but we want the angle to the shoulder to be more of a 45 degree angle. And this horse's neck comes in pretty high, it ties in pretty deep. I say it kind of looks a little bit like a stovepipe. This is a horse that's he's kind of a big coarse kind of kind of kind of guy. He's fairly thick, big in his head, kind of thick in his throat latch. Uh, not very typey and um, attractive about the way that his head and neck are put together. This is a horse that has more breediness to her. She's got a cleaner, leaner through her throat latch. Her neck ties in much higher into her shoulder, and so an overall more attractive, athletic-looking horse that we have here. Now moving on back, we're going to talk about the shoulders, withers, their back, their hips, and, and their legs, especially as we're looking at them from the side. And these are all the kinds of things we're going to evaluate of the horse's overall um, their overall structure. So as far as the shoulder is concerned, we ideally would like the horse's shoulder to be at about a 45 degree angle. We want the withers laid relatively far back, and we're looking how the angle here comes down to the point of his shoulder. Ideally also the point his this line is the same as what we have down here through the horse's pastures. This leads to a horse that's going to be a longer strided horse, probably let fewer soundness issues in front, um, and uh, was, is going to be sounder on his front legs. So that's with the shoulder. We want a back that's relatively short and strong. And in addition, that we, we when we come back here and look at the hip, we want what we call this area here of a turn to the croup, so it doesn't fall off really steeply, but it has a nice, nice uh, gentle turn to it. As far as the shape of the hip, I always say we want it to be something of a boxy type shape, where the top of the hip here is about the same length as it is down here through the stifle region. Remember, the push and the power come from down here, so if this is very weakly made, he's not going to have be able to to uh, uh, drive forward, jump a fence, pull a calf, turn a barrel, and all those different things kinds of things very well. Also, as we're looking at the horse from the side, we're going to look at his legs. Ideally, we'd like the forearms to be longer. Excuse me, the forearms to be longer than the than the cannon bones. Also, we'd like to be the hocks relatively close to the ground. Naturally, we want these legs set square underneath themselves, both when viewed from the side and looking at the front. As far as the hock, we say we want a nice set to the hock, where it comes back here with a little bit of an angle, and then the cannon bone comes down straight towards the ground. We want to avoid horses that are too posty-legged where it's excessively straight in their hock, and the flip side is one that has too much angle or too much set to their hock. This is another illustration of showing what we call the hoof passion axis, where ideally this angle of their li the line of their shoulder is the same angle as what we have down here through the horse's foot and through their pasture. Here's a comparison of the hips of a couple of different horses. We can see what we talk about a horse that has a lot of width down here through the stifle, which is nearly the same as the length of the hip up here from the point of the hip to the point of the buttocks. This mare has what I call a little bit more of a triangle shape to her hip, where the length up here is not too bad, but she's fairly weak down here through her stifle region. You can also see that this mare's hind leg is set out a little bit further behind her, and all of this orientation goes in together. This mare, although she's standing with her leg out behind, the orientation of her hock is much more desirable. This will lead to a horse that can track up and pull his hocks underneath himself um, much more better, much better. Uh, whereas this horse will tend to leave her hind leg out behind her, um, which can affect some of her athletic athleticism to do a variety of different types of things. Another area we talk a lot about in, in our reasons and things is looking at a horse's top line, looking them over through here, and we want a horse with a very long, strong top line. We look to see through here and make sure there's not much of a dip in her back and that this is all really, relatively nice and blends blends very nice and smoothly together. The shape of the hip with, with a nice turn to the croup and also with um, how the hock comes down, down and stands down underneath that horse's body. All right, so we can kind of look at the basic structure of both of these horses here, and we've already kind of talked to this about this one on her balance, but when we look at some of the basic structural types of things of both these horses, we can see that this one, if we go back to her balance, is probably more correctly balanced, particularly because he's shorter and str shorter over his back. Um, he also has a neck that ties in higher and more correctly than what this mare does over here. This mare tends to have a little bit straighter shoulder. We already know that she's quite long in her back. This horse, although not ideal, he is a bit upright in his shoulder and also a little bit upright in his pasture. 
as far as we're looking over his top line, he has a nice turn to his croup. His hawks maybe are out behind him just a little bit. We would like him to have a little bit more um, stronger with his hip. He could be a bit um, uh, bigger and longer, longer in his hip if we want to get really critical talking about some of the general structural types of things with this horse on this side. We've kind of talked about this horse quite a bit, and I really can, she's a good one to show you some things on structure that we really don't like very much. If you kind of look at her, and to me, the overall general impression I see whenever I look at this horse is she has a little bit of a hunchback look to her. If you can see, she's got a very deep neck. It's a kind of a stovepipe neck. Her shoulder is very upright. This is caused by her withers being very high up on her neck, causing the shoulder to be very, very up and down, her neck tying in very deep between her front legs. This mare also, though you can't see, was more upright in her pasture, and she always traveled with quite a bit of animation in front. <clears throat> in addition, she's light down here through her hip, not very long in her hip, and this mare always had trouble with leaving her hocks out behind her. Some of the orientation of their shoulder and their front leg has a lot to do with how the horse is going to track and move. We talk about the foot flight pattern. For a horse that has a long sloping shoulder, they're going to pick that foot up and have a nice even arc when they set it down, and the concussion forces down in that, in that horse's foot are going to be relatively equal. <coughs> Excuse me. Some horses have what we say is a long toe and an underrun heel, and they're going to pick that foot up and kind of come down in kind of a, an angle such as this. The horses we really want to avoid are those that are, have more upright in their shoulders, they're short and steep in their pastures, they will tend to be more upright in their football, in, in the foot flight, and have a shorter uh, stride. They will also be horses that tend to have more problems with some lamenesses and sorenesses in their front feet. Alright, so we've talked about balance, we've talked about muscling, we've talked about structure. The other one we'll need to address also is the overall quality and refinement, which really is just looking and taking into account their overall general appearance. Uh, we will look at their head and, the, head and neck, um, look at the quality of their hair coat, quality of their bone and muscle. And I think it's very easy to see that even though we know this guy here is kind of a light muscled horse, he by far is a higher quality type of horse than this horse is down here. And so we'll use those, we, you, you won't that often have as big a drastic a difference between two horses, but it's obvious to see that this is a very high quality horse. Sure, there's some conformational things about him that aren't perfect, but overall quality and refinement is pretty good in that way. Another area that we're going to talk about and evaluate is the breed and sex characteristics. We want the, the stallions and geldings to look like males, the mares to look like females, and it's good to be familiar with the different breed characteristics of a variety of different breeds. Although, as we judge classes, very rarely will we have mixed breeds within a class, as you do go around and judge a variety of different kind of shows, there is a the potential of having different kinds of horses and things mixed up within a class. So what's common, so the basic evaluation of balance and those types of things and structure is going to apply across the board. Each breed between draft horses, um, I believe this is a Morgan, we've got a POA here, they're all going to have things that are very unique and critical and important to those breeds. With what we've been doing here, we can't do a very good job of evalu evaluating travel and way of going, but that is another area that we do evaluate when we're looking at the conformation of horses. It's important to look at them both in front, coming to you and going, from, going away from you, and also from the side. When we look at them from the front and behind, we're going to be able to really look to see how straight they travel, do they pick up their feet correctly, uh, are they narrow, are they wide, are they average, and those types of things. From behind, we also can watch how they move up at the point of their hip and get some ideas to make sure that those horses are sound and don't have any soundness issues as we're looking at them. I also like to look at horses from the side because it gives you a good evaluation of what their length of stride is and how they're going to walk out with their shoulders and track up behind with, with their hocks and give you a good idea of how they can use, um, use their hocks and, as a predictor of how they might ride when, when you get on them. Here's a horse I think you can see that really he's kind of lacking in some of the quality. Just the overall general appearance of him, he's kind of a rough, rugged, um, more coarser type of horse. We've already looked at his head and his neck. You look at his general bone structure and those types of things, and he's just going to be a little, a, a bit more coarser, um, lacking some of the quality and refinement that we like to see in many of our horses today. 
So this goes through a variety of different things, just looking at some of the basic conformation of the horses, the different categories we're going to use to evaluate them on, and those are also the categories that we're going to use to develop a set of oral reasons. And so we'll, the big ones are we're going to be looking at their balance, their structure, and their muscling, and then in addition, the quality and refinement, the breed and sex characteristics, and the travel and way of going.